Hi folks, it's Ken Everett from Digital Matter here. Uh, I'd like to wish you all a very happy 2022 and hope that it's going to be a successful one for you all, no matter where you are in the world. Um, today I want to just talk a bit about our sensor monitoring roadmap and in particular introduce the Hawk uh, IoT data logger or sensor gateway, uh, depending on your use case. Um, it's a product that is kind of the next generation of our, our IoT sensor monitoring devices. And uh, yeah, we'd really like to make sure you know where it's headed and what our plans are. It is pre-release, so there is a bit of a cautionary around um, the information that we're sharing. Some of the stuff is still in the design stages, right? So um, please engage with us and discuss around what's locked in and what's not locked in. Um, so the current sense of monitoring use cases that we have, we see there's two primary usage scenarios, and these are what are we trying to address. So the first is asset tracking with additional sensor input. And we've got quite a few options already in that um, use case. The second is what I would call static IoT sensors. So typically, they either aren't moving and they're having to monitor something. So it could be a remote tank level. It could be pump usage. It could be a, a pump dispensing some kind of liquid. And you want to count the pulses on the pump to monitor how much has been uh, dispensed. It could be cold chain monitoring fridges in a, in a store. Or it could be cold chain in a vehicle that's moving, for example. So there's there's a couple of different um, use cases there, but typically we find they fall into either one of these two categories. So um, the one size fits all device side of things has always been a challenge for us. We, and those of you who've been working with us for a while would see the evolution of some of our devices and where they've gone. Um, Really where we've ended up with our current Eagle device is trying to make a product that has got multiple I.O. on it and, you know, packing quite a lot onto that board. One of the problems with it is it, um, A, doesn't always meet the requirements, but typically those boards therefore grow in size and they grow in complexity and they grow in cost. And um, there's a lot of componentry on there, which has become particularly relevant given the current component shortages, right? So what you don't really want to start happening is that uh, you can't run the board because there's some component on there. And in fact, your use case doesn't even need that component. Um, so before we start on, on some of the Hawk side of things, just a quick overview of some of the sensor options that we've got. These range, I'll go through these very quickly, but these range from digital inputs, which can be used to do door open, close, tank switches, that type of thing. Analog inputs, these have very, been around for ages. Uh, one wire input, which um, has also a protocol that's been around forever, and there's there's actually a lot of low-cost sensors available on the market that use this one wire or R button, uh, as it was commonly known, because the kind of RFID, or not RFID, driver ID type touch button was available. Um, and then obviously on Bluetooth, and really in the last, I'd say, 18 months to two years, we've seen an explosion in the, in the availability of Bluetooth um, sensors and tags on the market. So there's a wide range now generally available. And one of the advantages is there's no set electrical interface, right? It's obviously using wireless. So if we have a device like our um, G120 that has an, uh, a Bluetooth module on it, pretty much um, barring some uh, protocol changes, maybe uh, we should be able to talk to any kind of sensor that you come along with. So there, there are a bunch of other common interfaces, right? And this, this list is pretty long. And it yeah, you know, this is not all of them by any means. So um, when I say to you that, you know, one size fits all uh, is quite difficult to come by, you can also think about it in terms of what combination of these you need, right? So we've got some people that want to do pulse counting, but they might want a device that can pulse count, say, four inputs, uh, whereas the Eagle, you know, might only be able to do a certain number. Anyway, um, the current uh, wide range of devices, so those are devices that we've got that, that plug into... Uh, some kind of battery source. They might have an, a backup battery on board, but really that's only designed to go for a short time. So the wired devices need an external power source. Uh, the latest versions, Dart 3, G70, and G120, offer us some great options for simple sense integrations on top of the fact that they're an existing tracking unit that wires into typically a vehicle, maybe a piece of equipment. Um, so those three have got digital inputs, analog inputs. Um, the analog inputs have, are new, by the way, on the Dart 3 and the G70, which just gives us some nice new options with those devices. And then the one wire R button supporting those sensors we mentioned. And then the G120 also has RS-232 on there. Um, that, for example, is used uh, to talk to an external Iridium modem if you want to use Iridium, but it could be used for other applications. And there's a Bluetooth um, gateway on the G120. So that uh, enables affordable uh, Bluetooth tags and sensors from, from 
third party sensors as we've spoken about. The the battery powered asset tracking side of it with sensors and Bluetooth sensors in particular now falls into the category of the Oyster Edge. Um, literally just been launched. Uh, we just have um, have got some stock. The Oyster Edge uses our edge technology for indoor and outdoor tracking. Very, very low power and um, it's got a Bluetooth 5.2 gateway on there. So what that means is the device can obviously do very good indoor outdoor tracking, but also talk to then sensors. So you could have it in the back of a van um, or as part of a shipment, talking to sensors that are part of that shipment. So for example, you would have temperature sensors in multiple um, containers or pallets within the shipment, and you're actually tracking that shipment and pulling the data off those sensors as you go. Um, the Remora 3 is the next evolution of the Remora 2. Uh, we haven't spoken about this much publicly yet, but that's coming soon, and that also has the same Bluetooth 5.2 gateway on there, building on the Bluetooth gateway that's in the current Remora 2, so very similar, and gives you the same functionality as what you'd get out of the gateway and the Oyster Edge. The, the IoT sensing devices historically on the cellular side have been the Falcon and the Eagle, on the LoRaWAN side, our sensor node and sensor data, which was end of life a while ago. And where we got to was that the, the challenges we we're facing across these multiple um, uh, product lines was that some of the components now have already gone end of life, in fact, quite a while ago. We've got shortages of components on these, so we, we have been prompted to look at redesigns to really try and design for components that we know we can get. Um, and then deciding on which IO combinations to place on these devices has always been a challenge, right? Because as soon as you, you lock something down on the design, guaranteed that be a customer will come, a, come along that will want a slightly different combination or one more of something. And um, obviously the design only caters of a certain number. So we really wanted to build in or design for some type of flexibility, reduce the cost of um, the device itself, reduce the, the number of um, stock keeping units that we have in terms of devices, and then um, with each device we added to the family, there's this cost of RF certification. So we, we wanted to try and manage that better. So that leads me on to introducing you to the concept of the new Hawk. Um, for want of another term, we're calling it an IoT data logger. At the heart of it, it is a, a device that is designed to uh, communicate with multiple external interfaces and sensors and to take the information from it, log it, um, into non-volatile memory and send it up by some communication mechanism. So in a nutshell, it's designed to handle multiple IoT use cases across any type of sensor inputs and outputs. So the concept is quite simple in that we've got a baseboard which deals with communication, but also deals with other common services like power management, power supply, backup battery, communications, uh, flash memory, um, and that comes in different communication options. So We've actually nailed down already the cellular design uh, for the cellular baseboard. Uh, the LoRaWAN baseboard is in design, and we're busy evaluating and looking at various IoT satellite options as to what would make sense for an IoT satellite baseboard. The actual input-output side of it is managed by what we call an IO card. So this is a small plug-in card that plugs into the, the baseboard of the Hawk, and nine of those IO lines on the screw terminal are available for the card to configure however it wants. Right? So the pluggable card determines the functionality of these IOs. Um, so depending on the requirement, you choose the base communication technology you need on the baseboard, and then which card you want to actually plug into it uh, to cater for the input-output options that you need. So the Hawk in itself um, is going to be in a new housing um, that is busy in design at the moment. Uh, rugged, sealed IP67 housing. Inside there's going to be a large rechargeable um, LiPo battery pack, um, at least 3,000 milliamp hours, maybe even bigger. Um, so the device itself can be line powered and the battery pack can be used for backup purposes. Um, it could also be charged periodically, and here I'm talking about possibly even once, for example, in a season uh, for growing in, in ag tech, right? So, uh, you know, once every six months or nine months or even for a year. Um, it can be deployed and the battery pack has enough capacity to actually run the whole product for that period before recharging. And there are options around, you know, it's got a built-in charger in it. It can also be then hooked uh, directly to, for example, an external 12-volt solar panel that would charge up the internal battery during the day and uh, it can run off that overnight. 
So we've also designed in understanding that these um, IoT sensor products go, sometimes go into outlying areas or maybe even to basements in, in buildings. We want to have the maximum RF performance. So each of the products is catering for an option of an external RF antenna as well, and you can um, switch between the internal RF antenna if you've got good uh, performance wherever you are and you don't need the extra cost and hassle of in installing an external antenna, or you can install the external antenna if you need to. The device, the Hawk, has got a GPS on board, on the baseboard, for infrequent position updates. So it's really designed for, okay, I've, I've deployed an ag tech product out in the field. It's hooked up to SDR12 doing, for example, soil moisture measurement. Um, I actually want to be able to use the GPS to get a, an occasional position update, even possibly just once after deployment, so that I don't have to manually capture that information. Um, so in com comment there is that there's no accelerometer on the product. So it's really not designed as an asset tracking product. It's required, designed as an IoT sensor device that will give you position as well. Um, on the baseboard, there's a large non-volatile so flash memory for logging of data. Um, if for some reason you're out of coverage and you need to log a whole lot of memory there, but it's also for things like configuration information. And then a 12-wire terminal strip that makes it easy for you to wire in your external sensors and external interfaces. So there's the usual kind of external power, ground. Uh, we've catered for a, a standard trigger digital input on the baseboard. So in fact, if your use case was just simple monitoring of a float switch, for example, in a tank, you wouldn't even need a plug-in card, right? You could actually just use the built-in digital input on the baseboard. But then there's nine um, I.O. lines, as I spoke about, that are defined by the actual card itself. So um, the card has got these nine lines that are available for the card to do whatever they want with them. Um, the card plugs into the Hawk baseboard. Uh, we as a company, as Digital Matter, are developing a range of standard I.O. cards for common use cases. Um, some examples, for example, coming out of the, the Eagle and the Falcon and the other use cases we, we've got out there. SDR12 is a common protocol used in soil moisture monitoring and other agricultural ag tech sensors. Uh, that is uh, going to be on one of the cards. Digital inputs, analog inputs, pulse counting, even high frequency pulse counting or very low power pulse counting. Um, outputs to be able to switch on and off um, peripherals and equipment. I2C for a variety of sensors there, RS-485, including uh, Modbus, we're talking to sensors on Modbus, 4 to 20 milliamp hour, uh, 4 to 20 milliamps for uh, monitoring sensors that use that, RS-232 if needed, and you know, the list can kind of go on there, including things like power management, right? So on um, one of the cards uh, we'll talk about now, voltage boosting for powering sensors. So particularly on SDR-12, some of these External sensors require, um, say, 7, 9 volts or even more. Um, and uh, we can put that circuitry on the card, right? So the card allows us to be very flexible around what we're doing on the I.O. side, not just um, electrical interface, but also on the power supply side. The other good thing about the card is that we, we're defining the standard interface between the card and the baseboard. So the, the advanced use cases... Um, if you've got one and we don't have a standard card for you, we can design a custom card for your use case. Um, clearly, the commercials need to make sense around that, but please engage with your local digital matter sales team to have that discussion around what we can do. The other um, thing we're going to be putting in place is that you can actually develop your own firmware on the card if you wish. So this is particularly useful if you want to actually integrate any kind of custom or advanced um, sensors on there that you might want to um, keep that kind of intellectual property in-house or do it yourself. Uh, there might be proprietary algorithms in terms of doing you know, fast Fourier transforms or analyzing the data coming in, filtering it, processing it before you actually send it up. Particularly if you start thinking about um, bandwidth constrained links like IT satellite links, you might want to be doing extra processing on the, the card before you send the data up. Um, and the other option it gives you is to actually almost implement control functionality if you need that. Right. So. If this sensor is giving me a reader that a reading that is within this range and this input is high, then I want to maybe turn on this pump to pump water through the system. You know, it you could kind of knock yourself out in terms of the functionality you want to program in there if you wanted to. Obviously, that would be for you know more advanced use cases. You'd obviously need to be able to actually develop the firmware and maintain that yourselves. So the first card that we're working on is what we're calling our AgTech one. Um, you know, they know, as the name suggests, it's targeting some of our ag tech use cases, but by by no means does it mean it has to be an ag tech use case, right? Um, any one of these interfaces could be used for certainly in other, other use cases. So um, just 
showing you the list of what we've got on this first card. I mean, it's quite comprehensive. So SDI-12, um, if we're talking to any SDI-12 sensor, we've got a voltage boost with an option of either 5 volts or 12 volts selectable to actually power the, the probes and sensors. We've got an I2C interface, which uh, a lot of people are using for things like temperature and humidity monitoring. We've got a 3.3 volt switched output power for um, the I2C sensors typically, but it could be used for others. There's a switch ground uh, digital output that allows you to turn things on and off. There's a digital input with pulse counting, 4 to 20 milliamp input, and a one wire slash I button input. So quite comprehensive on the first card. And then um, yeah, we will be working on what subsequent cards we'll be producing. So in terms of communication options, I've mentioned already, but the baseboard versions of the Hawk that we've got planned, so the cellular uh, product using LTE, CAD-M1, and MBRT on, the, on that uh, board uh, is currently in prototyping. So that's under development from our side. That design is pretty nailed down. So barring any kind of uh, issues with that design that we need to change, um, that's locked in and happening. Um, I know we always get asked about timing, and component shortages are always a problem, right? But we're really hoping to be able to produce some of the cellular baseboards by July or so this year. Uh, the LoRaWAN baseboard version is in design, and we're in discussion around the IT satellite, which provider to use and uh, what makes the most sense in terms of this product moving forward. And who knows, maybe there'll be other ones uh, in the future. So in conclusion, uh, quickly from my side, the, the existing wired acid trackers can be used for simple as, uh, sensor monitoring, um, like temperature, you know, pretty easy to do today. Uh, the Bluetooth tags and sensors are good options to use with uh, long-life battery-powered acid trackers. So if you're really looking to do acid tracking with a sensor input, we've already got devices that handle that. Um, the IoT sensor stuff, which is a kind of a bit more advanced sensor monitoring, we move migrating, certainly our strategy is that the Hawk will have your, your use cases covered. Um, so the Hawk is a flexible device to solve these IoT sensor monitoring use cases with multiple communication options. So pick the baseboard that you want depending on the communication option, and then pick the IO card that you want to plug in to give you the interfaces that you need. So we'll be making a range of these cards, and IO custom versions can be designed uh, depending on your use case. So I'd urge you to engage with us in terms of talking about your requirements. Um, let's discuss what card options we've got coming and how the Hawk can work for you. And um, yeah, we're really excited about where this can go and to launch it um, as kind of a, I guess, a Swiss army knife of IIT asset monitoring and data logging. Um, thanks very much for your time. As I say, hopefully 2022 is a fantastic year for you guys and uh, looking forward to the year ahead. Cheers.